Hey everyone, Victor is here and in this video I want to talk about the reduction of carboxylic acids and carboxylic acid derivatives with complex hydrides like lithium aluminum hydride. So first of all, let's look at the general scheme for this reaction. Here I have the generic formula for some sort of a carboxylic acid derivative where X is going to be my living group. And if that living group is chlorine, that is going to be acid chloride. If it is the alkoxide, that is going to be an ester, and we can also have the carboxylic acid itself. And the way this general mechanism is going to work, I am going to bring my lithium aluminum hydride, which is my reducing agent here. So lithium aluminum hydride, which is essentially just a source of H-, is going to attack my carbonyl, and the electrons are going to be pushed onto the oxygen atom. Now, as the result of this nucleophilic attack, I am going to get the corresponding tetrahedral intermediate, and that tetrahedral intermediate is going to immediately lose our leaving group by pushing the electrons down back onto the carbon and kicking the X out, which going to give us the aldehyde intermediate. And since we are still in the presence of the reducing agent, our lithium aluminum hydride, I'm going to bring my aldehyde and lithium aluminum hydride back and do another nucleophilic attack from my hydride onto my carbonyl. Now, before we continue any further, the one sort of like a quick disclaimer that I want to make here is that for the simplicity's sake, I'm going to keep on rewriting my lithium aluminum hydride like this. In reality, that is not 100% correct because we are going to end up with a huge range of different reducing agents uh, containing uh, aluminum hydrides in the system, but for our purposes, we don't really need to go into those gory details and rewriting lithium aluminum hydride is going to be just sufficient efficient enough for us. One thing to keep in mind is that these reactions are always done in excess of our hydride, which means that we will have as much lithium aluminum hydride as we need, so if we need to bring it multiple times throughout the reaction, we will. So now, coming back to my nucleophilic attack here, the result of this nucleophilic attack is going to be the corresponding alkoxide, which now, since we cannot do anything else, we are going to do the acidic workup with, so we are going to bring our uh, water, our acid, and do our proton transfer like so, giving me my final product, which in this case is going to be the primary alcohol. Now, of course, it's very cool to talk about all those generic mechanisms, but let's look at a more concrete example. So, for my first example here, I'm going to bring the reaction with the acid chloride. And the very first thing that I'm going to do here, I'm going to redraw my lithium aluminum hydride and I'm going to show this nucleophilic attack from my hydride onto my carbonyl, giving me the corresponding uh, tetrahedral uh, anion over here, tetrahedral intermediate. Then, this tetrahedral intermediate is going to kick my leaving group out, which in this case is the chlorine, giving me the corresponding aldehyde. Now, from this point, I am again going to be bringing my lithium aluminum hydride, because I'll remind you we are working in excess of this reagent, and at this point, we can do the next nucleophilic attack, so I'm going to show my lithium aluminum hydride attacking my carbonyl again, now giving me the following alkoxide intermediate. And of course, the last step here is going to be the uh, acidic workup, so I'm showing this um, water here right away, so I'm going to go in protonate my uh, alkoxide, and as a result, we are going to get our primary alcohol in this case. Now, when it comes to the acid chlorides, these species are incredibly electrophilic, which means that even a mildly nucleophilic reducing agent can also react with those, which means that in this case, we can use sodium borohydride. It's not going to work in other instances of other carboxylic acid derivatives, but with acid chlorides, it does work just fine. So if you wanted to reduce acid chloride 
to an alcohol, you don't have to use the uh, lithium aluminum hydride, sodium borohydride will do. Now, talking of other carboxylic acid derivatives, let's move on to esters. And as always, I'm going to start by drawing my lithium aluminum hydride, and of course here we are going to do our nucleophilic attack from the hydride onto a carbonyl, looking like so, giving me the corresponding tetrahedral intermediate. Like in the previous case, here my tetrahedral intermediate going to kick my leaving group out, which is going to be the ester part, or the ether part, however you want to call it, but this portion of the molecule over here, that is now going to be my leaving group. And once that guy disappears, what we are going to end up with is, again, the aldehyde. So, same thing as before, rinse and repeat, we are going to bring our lithium aluminum hydride, then I'm going to take this lithium aluminum hydride, and I will do the nucleophilic attack on my carbonyl like so, giving me the corresponding alkoxide as the intermediate, I'm going to bring my acid for the acidic workup, protonate my alkoxide like so, giving me the final product, which in this case is again going to be the primary alcohol. Pretty easy. But the first trouble in this paradise is going to come in when instead of regular ester, we are going to have a cyclic ester or a lactone, if you like. Now, in this case, if we work through the mechanism, there is something interesting that we are going to see. Well, first of all, I am going to bring my lithium aluminum hydride over here, and like before, I'm going to do my nucleophilic attack on the carbonyl, like so. It's kind of funny looking arrow. Anyways, this nucleophilic attack is going to give me my cyclic tetrahedral intermediate, then my tetrahedral intermediate is going to kick the leaving group out, but in this case, the leaving group over here, that is actually a part of the molecule itself. So I end up breaking a bond right over here, but the rest of the molecule is still going to be intact. So don't just rip the molecule apart when you have a cyclic compound, rather we end up opening our cycle in this case. And what we are going to get here is going to be this aldehyde, which has the alkoxide kind of hanging on the side. Now, I'm going to bring another equivalent of lithium aluminum hydride, of course. In this case, the nucleophilic attack is now going to happen on my newly formed carbonyl, giving me the following dialkoxide intermediate, which we are going to work up with our acid, so I'm going to combine both steps, showing the acid protonating one oxygen, and then our acid protonating the second oxygen as well. And as a result of this proton transfer, we are going to get our final product, which in this case is going to be a diol. So when you are working with lactones, Remember, you don't just rip the molecule apart, you are opening up the cycle, which means that both sides of what used to be a cycle now going to contain that OH group. And for questions like that, it is probably a prudent idea to work through the mechanism rather than just jump ahead and try to predict the product right away. With a little bit practice, of course, you will be able to predict your products without any problems, but for right now, stick to the mechanisms. Now, my next functional group here is going to be the carboxylic acid itself. So when I bring my lithium aluminum hydride to that carboxylic acid and I try to do the reaction between those, the very first thing that's going to happen here is going to be actually the proton transfer deprotonating our carboxylic acid. Lithium aluminum hydride is actually fairly basic, so whenever you bring it in contact with anything that is in you know, even a little bit acidic, it is going to deprotonate that. Reaction is extremely violent and explosive, so you have to be really careful when you're doing that, but if you're careful enough, it is possible to do this reaction, and as a result, you are going to get the corresponding carboxylate, the negatively charged intermediate. Now, the thing about lithium aluminum hydride is that that is a very powerful nucleophile, which means that it will be able to react with something that is already negatively charged. So what's going to happen in this case, my lithium aluminum hydride going to come in 
and attack that corbanil despite the negative charge that we have sitting next to it. And as a result of this nucleophilic attack, we are going to get this double negatively charged intermediate. And based on the research data, we know that the aluminum and lithium actually going to coordinate around those oxygens, making a very complex structure. I am going to show a super simplified structure over here. This thing has nothing to do with the reality. But for our purposes, I just want to show that aluminum coordinates around those oxygens. And because of that, we can essentially treat one of those oxygens as a living group. Because what's going to happen at this point is that one of those oxygens going to kick the other oxygen out, and as a result of that, as a result of this, you know, quote-unquote living group dissociation, we are back to forming of our aldehyde. And as soon as we have our aldehyde, we have lithium aluminum hydride around, so this guy is going to come in, do the nucleophilic attack on our carbonyl, and give us the corresponding alkoxide as an intermediate which, of course, we are going to work up with the acid, so acid comes in, protonates this position like so, giving us final product, which is again going to be a primary alcohol. But this streak of primary alcohols as our product is going to end as soon as we introduce carboxylic acid derivatives that have nitrogen in them. So the next functional group that I have here is the amide. And since amides are a little bit acidic, the pKa of the nitrogen of the amide is somewhere around 15, once I bring a lithium aluminum hydride, the very first thing that's going to happen here, similar to carboxylic acid, we are going to deprotonate that amide, giving us the corresponding negatively charged species. But just like in the case of the carboxylic acid, that is not going to stop us. So we are going to bring our lithium aluminum hydride and we are going to do the nucleophilic attack onto our carbonyl like so, giving us the following double negatively charged intermediate. Now, in this case, we are most likely going to have something very similar to what we had in the case of the carboxylic acid, namely some sort of a strange complex with the aluminum, and that complex, again, going to make one of our negatively charged atoms into a decent living group. And since generally oxygen is going to be, well, somewhat of a better living group, and it has a higher affinity to aluminum, so what's going to happen here is that the nitrogen is going to kick our oxygen out, and instead of nitrogen leaving, we have the oxygen leaving here, giving us the this imine type of a species after the uh, living group dissociation. And that part is important because now when I bring my lithium aluminum hydride again and I try to do the nucleophilic attack on this bond, I am attacking my carbon, electrons go onto the nitrogen, and as a result, I'm going to end up with the corresponding nitrogen-containing species, which after we do the acidic workup, so I'm going to bring my water here, or rather I should say acid, I will protonate my nitrogen, and as a result, I'm going to get an amine, primary amine in this case, as my final product. So as soon as you have a nitrogen-containing uh, group, such as an amide over here in this case, we are going to get an amine and not an alcohol. And of course, just like in the case of the esters, which can have the cyclic version called lactones, we can have a cyclic amide, which is called lactam. In the case of the lactam, what we're going to see is that essentially this reaction is going to work as the eraser for this carbonyl that we have over here. So we're going to get rid of this carbonyl completely and just have our product uh, with the nitrogen. And notice that in this case, I did not open up the ring 
unlike, you know, what I did with my Aster. Here we are going to keep our cycle. And while I am not showing the mechanism for this specific reaction here, I do challenge you to show this mechanism which is going to be extremely similar to what I have right above, with the only difference that I am not going to have the initial proton transfer because, well, there are no hydrogens on our amide in this case, so you are going to proceed to the uh, nucleophilic attack right away. So try this mechanism and make sure that you get to this uh, final product which is a cycle and completely get rid of your carbonyl. And let me know how it goes. Now, finally, the last functional group that I want to talk about here is the nitrile. Because nitriles, although they don't really look like a normal carboxylic acid derivative, technically they are, and we can do the same uh, reaction with nitriles as well. So I'm going to bring my lithium aluminum hydride, and I'm going to do the nucleophilic attack on this carbon, pushing electrons onto the nitrogen. Since CN triple bond is fairly polar, the carbon is quite electrophilic there. It's not as electrophilic as in other uh, carboxylic acid derivatives. Nitriles are probably the least uh, electrophilic out of all of them. But nonetheless, lithium aluminum hydride is such a powerful nucleophile that even if it is a little bit polar, a little bit electrophilic, it is going to attack it. Now, as a result of this nucleophilic attack, I'm going to get this negatively charged intermediate. And as we have seen before, lithium aluminum hydride doesn't really care. So we are going to bring lithium aluminum hydride again, and I'm going to do another nucleophilic attack onto this nitrile like so, giving me the following uh, species where I have a double negative charge on the nitrogen. And most likely this species is somehow stabilized with lithium and aluminum coordinating around it, but that doesn't really matter for our purposes, because what we are going to end up doing here, we will bring in water, uh, we will bring a little bit acid, we will do the proton transfer to neutralize everything, and our final product here is again going to be the primary amine. So when it comes to reactions of our carboxylic acid and carboxylic acid derivatives with complex hydrides, when it comes to the acid chlorides, we are going to get an alcohol. Since acid chlorides are incredibly electrophilic, even the mild nucleophile like sodium borohydride will also work on those. Then, when it comes to the esters and carboxylic acids themselves, we are going to end up with primary alcohols as well. However, as soon as you have nitrogen-containing functional groups, such as amides or nitriles, in that case, you are going to end up with the corresponding amine rather than the alcohol. So while it seems like there are a lot of reactions that we do here, in reality, it is basically the same mechanism over and over again with only small variations. So make sure you practice your mechanisms, boop the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.